Hey besties, right now I'm traveling in the country of Mongolia, but I wanted to take a quick minute to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Aura. Here's a trivia question. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? If you guessed identity theft, then you're right. In fact, every 14 seconds, there's a new victim of identity theft. I've spoken with people who've had their identity stolen, and well, it's no walk in the park. If you could protect yourself, why wouldn't you? Well, now you have a way to protect yourself. Introducing Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. You might be familiar with one of these services, but if you don't have all the tools, well, that's like locking your front door, but leaving your back door wide open. Imagine seeing that your password was suddenly changed for your email, and then you start getting notifications of activity from your bank, credit cards, crypto accounts, etc. That could be scary. Thankfully, Aura's got your back. They do checks to see if your personal information is public anywhere on the internet. Then they send a alerts fast, right to your phone or email. Aura reveals when your email is listed in sketchy places where it really shouldn't be. It also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries. With their VPN, you can stay anonymous online by keeping your data safe and encrypted. Protect yourself and your family from identity theft. Go to Aura.com slash best ever food. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link. Get protected today. Now, onto the show. In this video, okay, the wire's over here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You're gonna witness, they have to get the wire around the neck to seal it in time. A countryside family here in Mongolia <laughs> cooking a giant rat. It doesn't get more intense than this, folks. It's like, do you wanna eat or not? It's not technically a rat. It's actually called a marmot, and they can be found all over this part of Mongolia. Marmots are large ground squirrels. They can often be found in groups, but they're not seen during the winter because they hibernate underground. They aren't gonna look like any squirrel you've seen before, I promise. These creatures have characteristically short but robust robust legs, enlarged claws, which are well adapted for digging. They've got stout bodies, large heads, and incisors to quickly process a variety of vegetation. Okay, that was sounding a lot like me. Until the vegetation part. This is considered one of the most delicious animals in Mongolia, and I think there was a problem with overhunting. So today we've gotten special government permission. Somebody has hunted the animal for us already. We're gonna see a local family cook it, but first, when you go to a local family's house, you must go inside and participate in a tea drinking ceremony. You just kind of you, drink, you eat cheese and drink tea. Let's get started. We are headed inside the yurt right now. This is a very traditional yurt in its springtime, summertime phase. This is what it's like when you come to a home in Mongolia. The hospitality is insane. Here we have a table full of different goodies, very common items that you would eat for breakfast in Mongolia. So this is a type of cheese with some fried bread. This is clotted cream. That's clotting nicely, so creamy. And here, a basket of Wonder Bread. Right now she's pouring out the milk tea. You can have it for every meal. It is like one of the most ubiquitous drinks, but it's so calorie rich that it's almost a liquid meal too. All right, take a look at this. You can see the tea here is still steaming. It's milky, but they have boiled this milk with some different tea leaves. But it's just like a some nice, comforting, warm milk. Even though it's summer here in Mongolia, it is still very cool in the morning. I'm gonna try out some of this right now. Just put the clotted cream on the cheese. Yep. Oh, they're so reckless. We've got the cheese. If the cheese wasn't rich enough, we were gonna put the clotted cream on top of the cheese. Jeepers, look at that. Let's give it a try. To be honest, it tastes like when you have a brick of mozzarella and you were so high that you passed out and the cheese stayed on the counter overnight and got kind of dried out and leathery on the outside. And that's what this tastes like. And you wake up the next day, most people would throw that cheese away. Not me. I'll still eat some dried out cheese. Then the clotted cream, it's not like it adds a lot of flavor. It just adds even more calories. I'm gonna try one more breakfast dish, a little bit of Wonder Bread, plenty of cow butter. And then they put sugar on top of that. This is what I ate when I was a kid. Huh? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mongolian pastry. I'd like to see Paris baguette do that. The butter is interesting. It tastes different than the butter in the U.S. It's a little bit sour. Oh, it's sour cream. Oh, it's not butter? I just, I just got the... See? <laughs> Food expert, that is a wild breakfast. But now it's time to meet the marmot. Here we have the marmot and the preparations have begun. This is gonna be prepared in the Odic style, a traditional style of cooking here in Mongolia. They made a hole around the neck and then he's going inside and digging out all the meat and all the bones. What's really impressive about this style is that all the bones are gonna come out of the body just through this neck hole. It's very important that they don't cut the hide because it's gonna become the cooking vessel for the meal. After they take out all the bones, all the meat, they're gonna cut up the meat, put it back in the animal with hot stones, seal it shut, and then it's gonna cook from the inside. It's insane. 
So right now you can see the skin is completely inside out. This is our cooking vessel. First he puts in diced onions, then a generous portion of salt from a cute little salt pail like you would find at the beach. He's gonna let the salt kind of marinate the inside while our stones continue heating up. While we wait, the woman of the house is making a traditional Mongolian dish, milk tea dumplings, but without the boba. This place is full of action right now. It's incredible, the whole family is involved. It starts with a simple dough made from flour and water. They portion out the dough into these little perfect, uh, portions. Nailed it. She flattens them with a rolling pin, and then she is stuffing them with minced mutton. They look like these little, tiny, beautiful, handcrafted dumplings. So this is just the beginning of the process. They're gonna make a load of these, and then soon they're gonna be cooking them, and you're gonna find out why they're called milk tea dumplings. Here is the next step in the dumpling making process. Started with sheep butt fat, then a little bit of ghee, and then now the rice is frying in there too. This is a big old bucket of milk tea going right in. That looks awesome. It's bubbling up immediately. It's interesting to me that the rice is in there because obviously it's not a rice dish and it's far too much liquid for that amount of rice. All right, now that the milk is starting to get warmer and steam up a bit, we're putting in a bunch of pieces of dried mutton. That's gonna rehydrate. And then she puts in the dumplings. The dumplings are gonna cook and mix with everything else here. That's gonna steam or boil for about 15 minutes and then it's gonna be ready to eat. Here we have the final product. You can see everything inside the dumplings. I see some meat. I see maybe even some remnants of the sheep ass. Plus plenty of milky broth. She's gonna fill my bowl. Thank you. Wow, look at this. This is so chunky. It looks incredible. Thank you. Okay, no, this is, oh, okay. It's a lot. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. I'm gonna try the milk tea broth. It's a broth of salty, warm milk. Very interesting. Oh, look at that. There is still some sheep butt fat. Oh, yes. McCruz is watching this video right now. So jealous. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So chewy. My God, Mongolia has such extremely heavy food. Here we have the dumplings. These look awesome. They've got some real weight to it. It's a tougher skin. It's not just falling apart. Oh, that's good. Thick doughy wrapper on the outside, and then just an explosion of muttony, fatty meat on the inside. I like that a lot. A fly just literally committed suicide in my drink. The heck, what were you thinking? I know what you're thinking. Sonny, you're gonna continue eating with that spoon? Yeah, I'm Mongolian now. I'm not a little bitch. This is the mutton. I'm not sure if this mutton is meant to add flavor or if you're supposed to really eat it, because it looks like it's still hard. It was dried when she put it inside. That is intense. So a lot of the flavor has leaked out of it into the broth and it is just chewy, super dry. It's slightly rehydrated, but it is like mutton jerky. My gosh, for me, I'll stick with the dumplings. Mm. Now with the marmot hide ready, it's time to stuff it with hot stones and meat. Here we are. The process has begun. So he's putting the rock, I think, on a very specific organ or muscle and he's making sure each one gets to the right spot. The rocks are so hot. You can see it's steaming from the inside right now. It's a crazy whistling sound coming from inside. They've warned me that it's gonna get really hot. They said, no matter what happens, deal with the pain, deal with the discomfort because you cannot let go. Once you let go, you've ruined the entire process. Now he's putting in a bunch of the meat and then layers of rocks. Oh, this is crazy. Look at this plume of meat smoke. It's already cooking the inside. More meat, more rock. And then he massages it down into the body so it's in the right place. We've got all the organs in there, like a fruit and yogurt parfait, but with stones and marmot parts. <laughs> like a volcano. Now the steam is starting to hit me through the gloves. This marmot cannot take much more. It is full of stones. He seals it. Okay, the wire's over here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, guess what? It's hot. He feels the heat through the skin. They have to get the wire around the neck to seal it in time. He twists the wire once. He has to rotate it until the steam stops coming out. It is still leaking steam everywhere. He's grabbed a rope. He's gonna put that around the neck too in addition to the wire. Oh, there we go. Now this is like a real legit pressure cooker. Come on, you got this. It doesn't get more intense than this, folks. It's like, do you wanna eat or not? He's petting it for reassurance. He wants it to feel better with the fact that it's filled with rocks and it's dislocated body parts. And look, it's finally calmed down. Good boy. You did it. Now with the rocks inside, it's already cooking from the inside and we have to scorch the outside. We need all the hair off and for the outside skin to cook. It's only gonna take about 20 minutes. Oh guys, usually I say I wish you could be here to smell the food, but actually not right now. It smells like burnt hair. 
right now you can see the progress, the difference after about 20 minutes. This thing looks like bloated roadkill. It does not look appetizing at all, but it's not really meant to. It's not supposed to be aesthetically pleasing. It's all about the taste. In reality, it looks exactly how it's supposed to look right now. He's gonna keep charring it and scraping it and soon he's gonna wash it off too. This thing, it looks like a Midwestern chick who is getting ready for summer, went in the tanning bed, got locked in, and now this is the result. Hey. That's an appropriate joke. I've been tanning. Oh, gosh. The contours of the body are so strange. You can see it's kind of chunky now. You can see where the rocks are jutting out from the inside, creating these awkward, bumpy contours to the body. Boom, we are starting right now with a bang. Look at this. This is not milk tea. This is milk vodka. Oh, yeah, baby. So that is plumb full of alcohol. Give it a little bit of a sip. It's so weird, it has a cheesy aftertaste, but I like it. Let's jump into it. So you can see the rocks in its body, and you can see in each appendage, he had to purposely shove a rock down into the appendage so it would actually cook, even up here in these arms and legs. I can't cut it from the back. I actually need to give it a little bit of a flip and expose the belly. This is the most important part here, cutting it open and revealing what is inside. The knife in the chest, oh, it's got kind of a thick, leathery skin. Oh, it is opening right up. Traditionally, they put one slice lit in the skin right here all the way down and then that becomes the very first bite and then actually you have to take a piece of this cut that off you have to stand up and you have to give it back to nature That's literally exactly what they do. I promise. I've seen someone else do it. It was actually this way, not this way. Okay, you know what? I messed it up. I'm told I was supposed to do an underhand like softball toss and I actually went overhand. So, my apologies. I'm gonna do it a second time. Meat, walk back, give it to nature, underhand toss. All right, I got a thumbs up. This is a piece of the skin that I just took off. It is still torched on one side. This is the fat from the inside, a little bit of protein connected to. That is pretty healthy. It's not bad. It's definitely very charred and smoky. A little bit juicy. From here, you need to take out the rocks. All the rocks must come out first before you start eating. Oh, some of these rocks are caked in meat. Oh, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, there's so many. All right, I believe that is all the rocks, at least 90%. It's lost all its weight now. This is a joint. It's either a bicep or a... Yeah, no, that's definitely a hip. I'm told don't even try to cut it. Just bite the meat right off of there. I have the perfect comparison. It's kind of like rat meat. It's very lean meat, but it's juicy and kind of sweet. It's also picked up some of the flavor from the rocks as well. That's pretty good meat. Oh, right here. That is a liver. I can't believe it looks uh, like it just got beat up by those rocks inside. Huh? Oh, woo, that's strong, overpowering. I gotta wash that down with boots. Dry, sticky. I think just the intense char of this animal blends with the flavors I'm tasting and it makes me confused. I mean, look at this half charred tail. It looks like a cheerleader's ponytail that caught on fire. The most crazy unique part of this dish bottom is that when you go inside, you just find different bones in different places. Like what bone is this? This was in a leg probably. And then you're pulling it out of its chest. All right, what is this? I have no idea. This could be the spine or the pelvis. But I like it. Super meaty, but nothing's like overly chewy or hard. I didn't love the organs, but some of the meatier parts, especially the darker parts, that's the stuff I'm pretty into. But overall, it has surpassed expectations. So that is bought up made from a marmot. This is something that most tourists aren't gonna even be able to experience here. I got this very unique once in a lifetime chance to do this because the government wanted to help out. Our fixers here from the YouTube channel, Artger, are trying to help out too and just help us see the expansive culinary range this country has. It's wild, but I can't recommend it because you can't come here and eat it. You can only watch me eat it and then trust what I say. Cheers to the marmot. Thank you for giving your life. Guys, that is the end of the video. I want to say a huge thank you to these two for making it happen. I mean, these guys are great guys. They're showing us all around Mongolia. You can learn more about them and Mongolia on the YouTube channel called Altke. These guys are exploring food and culture all around the country, giving you close-up, insightful content that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Also, if you want to do a tour in Mongolia, hit these guys up. Their link is in our description box down below. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. Okay. Let's go find, like, a, do you guys eat rats? No rats, right? No Just rats. marmot. marmot. Just All right, we'll find something. <laughs>